So welcome back guys, I got a very exciting video for you today. We're gonna find out once and for all, who is the king of splitters? So it seems to me one of the most important things in a test like this is consistency. We've got to have consistent wood to get an accurate outcome, right? How much more consistent can we get than two rounds from the exact same tree? So let me fire up the chainsaw. We'll cut out four rounds here. We're going to try two splitting methods. We're going to try working around the corners, knocking the edges off, and then we'll do the traditional pie method. I think this is going to give us a pretty good answer on which one is the best, best splitter. Uh, I was thinking on the way down here, uh, one of the funniest things, one of the funniest stories I ever heard, I wanted to share with you guys while we're filing here, was uh, from some of you guys from the old days, the Wrangler Barn Channel will remember my old hen neighbor, Henry. Henry was uh, in his uh, late 80s, early 90s, I forget, but he was a logger his whole life up on Mount Hood and Mount St. Helens up in that area, worked as a mechanic as well. Uh, and he was one of the most brilliant guys I ever met, smartest guys, mechanical genius, and he never learned to read. So uh, he was telling me a story. His wife, uh, Marion, uh, they used to, uh, she used to do a lot of canning. And so she was doing this water bath canning in her kitchen. And she was, uh, had this uh, big metal jack. You know the jack, the game you used to play where you drop the ball and you pick up the jacks. You know, they kind of look like a cow trap, those little metal things with the balls on the ends. Well, she had kind of a novelty one. It was a great big one, you know, several pounds. And she had that in her kitchen and she would use that to weight down the jars. Because when you're water bath canning, you know, they want to lift up. You got to keep them down. So this jack had been sitting in this boiling hot water for a long time, you know, like half hour or so. And it was hot, you know, hundreds of degrees. Well, she... She had oven mitts or something. She would take it out and she set it on the counter. Right when she set it down on the counter, uh, one of Henry's friends came by uh, to visit. And he came in and sat down at the counter. He's like, hey, Marion, how's it going? Where's Henry at? And uh, he looked at this great big jack and he reached over. He, granted, it had just come out of this boiling hot water. He reached over with his bare hands, picked it up and sat it back down. And looked at Marion and said, don't take me long to look at something. <laughs> <laughs> when Henry told me that story, I thought that that was, <laughs> that was <laughs> the funniest thing that I ever did hear. You know, he didn't holler or, or hoop or yell. I mean, that's the epitome of, of, that's a tough guy right there. Don't take me long to look at something. <laughs> I, thought that that was, I thought that that was pretty funny here. All right, let's get this sharpened up and we'll make that last cut. and We'll get to, the, <laughs> get to, get this video uh, moving along. Got my saw stuck. All right. All right, let's bring up the first, the first round. All right, let's talk about two radical different schools of thought right here. So first off, 
This is, boy, this is my go-to right here. This is the Prandy, I don't know what it's called. I call it the Bismarck because it looks to, it, it reminds me of everything that's German. Big, strong, overbuilt, <laughs> powerful, lasts a long lifetime. Uh, it, this is my go-to when all else fails. And when I really get something that's gnarled and, and big, that this is my biggest, heaviest sledge. And there's a lot of really cool features of this. You know, you take it for granted. You, most people just look at this and think, oh yeah, sledge is a sledge is a sledge but it's not. Um, there's so much evolution that's went into this perfect example. This is rare to see this on an edge. This here, that's for hooking. That's having two tools in one. You noticed earlier maybe that I was using this to move those rounds around. You can use the tool to bite into there because of that little beak that sticks down and move things around. Very rare. You don't see that on big box stores. You don't see that hardly anymore. Uh, that, that's really a nice attention to detail. A long taper. Look at that beautiful taper in this thing. It's got a long taper so you don't have a great big bulbous and on it that when you strike into something wet wood that you've had malls that just bounce out very frustrating you don't get so much of that here because of just the superior design and shape now this over here the the uh, chopper one this is a very different school of thought here this is more of a, of a of a splitting axe rather than a splitting maul what's the difference well the handle for one you can see it's got a traditional style handle there we'll cover that here in a minute but a little bit faster swinging speed a little bit different concept. Of course, this, the chopper one has this mechanical advantage. Then that's what we're, we're here to find out today. Is this going to be superior to uh, the traditional heavy maul? As these little wings flip out there, is it going to blow this wood away? Is it going to knock it out? So that's what, we'll find out, find, that's what we're going to find out today. Let's cover the handles real quickly, and then we'll get into the test. So not only do the heads share a completely different school of thought when it comes to splitting wood, so the handles. You want to see two perfect examples of how handles should be done? Right here. Oh, so, so much of this. I could go on and on about this all day. Again, to the casual observer, you're just going to think it's a handle, a handle, a handle, right? No, man. This Prandy, I, I wish Prandy axes were available uh, in the States uh, instead of just to Europe because, man, they are, the more that I use them, you know, they have become, next to Grand Force Brooks, my go to axes, the ones that I keep. I, axes come through my hands all the time. Uh, the ones that I am really reluctant to give away are these. Uh, I just love them. They're so much good to say about them. Just the handles alone would be a video. Look at this strong, heavy handle right here. But it, what it does is it gives you that strength up here where you have a tendency to overstrike. We've all done that. You'll look at malls and they're beat up right there. Gives you some longevity there. It gives you a few, a few uh, mis you can make a few mistakes on it, not break your handle. And then it tapers down here to where your hands are going to be working into a nice, comfortable, more manageable size. This is too fat. This is just right. But they don't stop there. And here's where the rubber meets the road. What you don't see is it actually has a little palm swell on it. That, that really helps with fatigue. And it's, um, it's not typically done because it costs more money. You have to start with a much bigger piece of wood to end up with that. And then they, I mean, it, there's so much to this handle, I can't even tell you. From the way it's hung to the eye, it's really, really well done. Um, but it's a straight handle, so, and that's what you usually get from a mall. Now this here is a splitting axe. Now these are more popular, uh, they were certainly more popular out west, especially the, there's guys that used to split wood all the time. Even I think when my dad was in high school, there were some guys down at the paper mill, uh, young guys would work down there, and that's what they did all day is they split firewood for the wood boilers. And he said they look like, look like, uh, Mr. Olympian bodybuilders, you know, the shoulders in the back. You imagine having a job where you split wood all the time, but they preferred a splitting ax. And that may have something to do with, it could be regional, as well as um, the type of wood that we split, which would have been Douglas fir at that, at that mill. But look at this, this is handle perfection right here. It has got a beautiful Fawn's foot with a little kick on it. It has a, a nice curve to it. It is so good. I've looked at it and, and felt it and studied it that I am going to use this as a template for future splitting axes. It's really that good. I mean, look at that. It's got a nice big swell at the end of it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Right there, comes down, fits the hand really well. Beautiful sweeping, sweeping arc, really, um, just really works with the body it's i just man I, i'm ranting i could go on and on about these hands let's just, let's let's get to the, the splitting good grief i get going on about handles and going all day i should it's a whole video in itself there okay so i changed my mind we're gonna we're gonna use this one piece so we're gonna chop opposite sides because it's so symmetrical that i think that that's gonna give us the best best test so 
Plus I'm running out of daylight. I've been messing around so long. Okay, so let's start with the chopper one. Chopper one here will work on the right hand side and then we'll work over here on the left with the HMS Bismarck. Okay, you ready? We're gonna just do the side chop method here. Oh, that didn't stick. Let's give it two hits. Three, four, okay, five. Well, we have five right there to knock it off the side. Um, nice thing about it is it didn't stick, right? We don't like sticking. That makes us, gives us a lot of extra work. Okay, now the Bismarck, try to do a hit in the same place here. Oh, two, three, four. Oh, five. how about that? It's a chance of hitting. <laughs> Both those split in the same. Okay, let's move the camera and then we'll work. We'll hit these two sides. I guess we could do it right here. It's a little bit tall for me, this chopping block, but that's all right. We'll make it work. Hopefully we're in focus. Okay, so we'll do the right here with the chopper one. Oh man, that was a good hit. Oh yeah. That's two. Oh, if I would have hit it, that would have been, the third one would have knocked that off there. That was user error. Oh man, the pressure's on. Pressure's on for the Bismarck. Got the same piece of wood, pretty consistent here. Here we go, ready? Oh, that was a good one. That felt, felt the crack. Oh, two. Again, the same thing. I'll back up a little bit. Okay, so we got three again. Three again. See, so remember, we talked about the fibrous. Fibrous, I wonder if, if that would have, that chopper would have knocked that one off if I would have hit it right. Okay, now we got two more splits here. Can this, can we do it in one with the chopper one? Here we go. Oh yeah, look at it blasted apart. No fibers remaining, right? That's pretty good. Where, where, where were we? We're on the top there? Yeah, right there. Will the Bismarck, will it chop in one here? Let's see. Oh yeah. Even with more authority if I had to admit it. Um, okay, so let's do a quick, let's do the pie method. I'd say that was a push. Um, that was a push. All right, we got another one going here. Man, is there anything better than out in the forest splitting dug fur in the, in the cold autumn day, 27 degrees today. Okay, now we'll try the pie method. We'll see what happens, who comes out on top. Then I'll give you my conclusions here. I'm forming opinions right now. So last time we did the slabbing method, right? Where we take it and knock the four corners off and then usually one billet left in the middle, you can split it. We're gonna do the traditional way, the pie method this time. And I'll just, I brought you a little bit closer and then we'll alternate. So let's start with a chopper one. We'll see how many times it, it, it's gonna take to split here. So, ready? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I missed. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Guys, come on. Seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, <laughs> it's completely split over here. I would have, of course I would have moved around with the split, but I wanted to see if I could split it. I lost track. <laughs> we're gonna, we're in it now. Oh, come on, come on. Getting personal. <laughs> what was going on there? 
wasn't any, there's no knot or anything there. Really. Man, that, that was not very good. All right, let's roll another one on. <laughs> See what the Bismarck can do. Man, <laughs> that'll get you, get you in shape. So this is, actually the Bismarck's at a bit of a disadvantage here because this one's even bigger. This one's even bigger. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. Same tree. These two were connected to each other. So, whoo! All right. I don't know how how scientific this is. Let, let's just we'll get out. There's a knot right there. There wasn't a knot. There wasn't a knot with the chopper one. Well, come on. With German power, they can overcome. Oh, that feels solid. One, two, oh, three. We might be here for a while. I'll let you guys count. I got enough to worry about. All you hardwood guys tell me all the time how easy this stuff is to split. We work for, work for ours, too. Oh, goodness. Whew. That's a heavy mall to split, too, or just swing. We got a crack, that's it. It's curtains now, matter of time. Oh yeah, I love it, love it. Crossfit, Crossfit. <laughs> Is it count if I pry it apart? We're gonna keep at it, we're not gonna give up. Yeah, come on, one more. <laughs> All right, I wasn't counting. Give me a <laughs> give me the count in the comments. <laughs> Man, I think I need to get out and chop some more wood. All right, so let's wrap it up with my conclusions here. All right, friends. <laughs> so. Uh, well, if somebody go go back and if you can rewatch that, put in the comments how many what, what how many swings did it take uh, for each one? Uh, I guess is that definitive? It was a tie on the first one. It was probably pretty close to a tie on the second one. So it's all going to come down to uh, user experience. How about that user experience? Because obviously they they both work. Um, I have to say that I do feel. A little bit of uh, I don't know if I'd call it pain or discomfort in my hands from the mechanical motion of the vibration coming from those jaws slapping up transferring through the handle even though it is a good hickory looks like a hickory handle uh, my hands they, they hurt a little bit I don't maybe it's just me maybe I'm just soft but I don't think that a, that it would be a wise or a guy would really want to if you were say one of those guys back in the 60s that split wood for a living uh that if you'd want to swing this all day you know i don't know i, ha I haven't done it but i kind of feel like that may could be a problem now is that going to be an issue for the rest of us who you know maybe go out and split wood for three or four hours in the morning or until lunch uh, probably not uh, but it could be um, i don't remember i split a lot of wood and i don't remember feeling that um th that pain in my hands and i think that it's a direct directly to that. I knew no, I know when it went into the wood, I could I kind of it jarred me. It was kind of oh, that's kind of uncomfortable. Um, so I'd say that that was a downside. Um, it, it, there's no such thing as magic, of course. We we knew that, uh, but I can pretty much say from my experience so far that it, it's not a toy. It, it is not a toy, and 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 this is. This is a one specific type of wood. Will it work better with maple or with beech or with oak or hickory? 
you know, I don't know, uh, that's up to you. Um, would I recommend it over something like the Bismarck? No, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I don't dislike it at all, but that, that pain uh, from the vibration is a big problem for me, even though I do like a lot about it. But uh, you're gonna have some added maintenance issues there. Um, possibility of these things breaking. I, I just don't know. I, I just haven't seen an advantage um, that would overcome uh, the, the kind of the hand pain factor over the e e old Bismarck right here. This is a good one right here. That's, that's pretty hard to beat. Um, a little easier to swing this one. This was a little bit lighter, um, but uh, I think that's enough. I think we, you'll, you draw your own conclusion. So appreciate, the, uh, appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. If you don't mind, take a moment, click the thumbs up. I'm working hard out here for you guys, so it's, it's what you can do to, a way you can say thank you. It helps the channel out. Um, and so another video I wanted to do uh, that I thought maybe we'll do real quick while I'm out here is uh, maybe test the Bismarck up against a wedge. Uh, after wedges, I've got two style of wedges. I got the Prandy Twisting Wedge versus the regular wedge, and I've always been curious to see, is, it, is there an advantage? Uh, which one would be better? Uh, which, which is going to be faster and, and more efficient? So uh, if you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments, and we can... Uh, I'm going in. It's going to be supper time here, but I'll come back out tomorrow and do it. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.